Hey everybody, Jason here. I hope you're all doing really good. It's been a little while since I have had a look at one of these rugged smartphones and to be completely honest, I have grown quite fond of my last one. So today we are gonna be having a look at another one from another manufacturer. This is the Doji S98. This phone is said to have eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage and a whopping 6,000 milliamp hours of battery life. Plus, it comes with 20 megapixels of night vision and a standard 64 megapixel main camera. Let's not waste any time screwing around here and we'll just get this open right on up. I'm actually pretty stinking excited to look at this and see how heavy and all sorts of other things. So here we have it, folks. It is wrapped in plastic, just like I would hope. Let's get this peeled off of here and see what we got inside, shall we? There we are. It actually feels sort of similar to the last rugged smartphone that I unboxed. It is kind of heavy. So let's open it up and see what is included. We have a pry tool that is normally for like disconnecting things from motherboards. It came with a USB-C charger. The charger says it'll do five volts at three amps, nine volts at three amps, or it'll do 11 volts at three amps. Now I'm usually pretty skeptical, but I'm happy to say this one here, it is actually heavy, so that's a good sign. And it has the proper adapter connector on here for our power system here in the United States. That is much appreciated. And it also came with USB-C cable. Let's have a look at the phone. This is what we all want to know about, right? This, uh, so far, I'm liking the feel of it. Now, during my last unboxing, I was a little bit overwhelmed by the, you know, the heavier phone, but I have really taken a liking to these, um, to the rugged phone that I have been using. Ooh, we have a screen protector. So they give you an extra one and they have one pre-installed on the phone. So we're just going to get this peeled off of there being really careful not to accidentally yank the whole entire screen protector off like I did last time. So right away, I do like the feel of this phone. Uh, whenever I continue talking about the last one, I'm referring to a Blackview BV8800 that's here in my left hand, and it's a brick. Uh, in fact, they both sort of are, but the battery life that I get out of this phone is absolutely fabulous. I use it pretty much nonstop all day, every day, and I'm charging it basically every two days, something like that. So we're not talking about this one, we're talking about this one. I think the Doji S98 Pro should have similar battery life, but I'm not completely sure just yet. This thing has this big circle on the back. This is actually like a multi-function display and I'm not sure, but uh, it may even be touch sensitive. We're gonna check that out here in just a minute. You know, it looks like this phone actually has a separate fingerprint sensor here that's separate from the power button, so that in my opinion, that's probably, I don't know, I'm going to say that's desirable. Let's see, we got number 9 and number 10. Number 9 is a power key. Number 10 is the fingerprint sensor. So we absolutely, positively, do have a separate fingerprint sensor from the, from the power button. Let's get this thing powered on and see what happens here, shall we? I'm going to hold that power button down. Ah, yeah, there we go. It's starting up. Doji. Now, the power button, it does feel like it has quite a bit of travel to it. So let's just let this thing start up here and see what we get. All right, so this is just the standard Android setup here. Now, another thing that I can say that I like about this phone is that it comes with Android 12 on it, uh, which is just like a straight standard operating system, whereas the other one that I'm using has a, um, you know, it's using like a custom operating system. So I'm gonna skip connecting this thing to the mobile network for now, but I am gonna go ahead and connect it to Wi-Fi. Okie dokie, almost there. So from here, this is just some pretty basic Android stuff. I'm gonna pretty well next my way through this. All right, so I've just set a pin number and now we're ready to set up Face ID. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click Agree. How to set up Face Unlock, basically look at it, like for real. Start, center your face in the circle, done. All right, so this thing can recognize me now just like that. I do wonder if Android phones could be fooled by just using a photograph. I'm not really sure, to be honest, I don't really care. All right, so there's Face ID. Let's set up the fingerprint sensor. One thing that I do feel like is a little bit of a drawback is that there's no way to feel that fingerprint sensor. You can't tell 
where it's at. So you would just, you know, get used to knowing it's just below here somewhere and just kind of touching all over the place, I think. So let me just keep scanning on that. Now I do like that you can't accidentally press the button, but I do feel like I got to turn the phone sideways in order to see where to put my finger. And also, I think if you just hold the phone, oh no, it's scanning my palm print. That's probably not, that's probably not good. All right, let's go ahead and finish the fingerprint recognition here. Yeah, so the fingerprint sensor actually works really good if um, you program it with your thumb. That way you just have to brush it down here somewhere. That's pretty cool. Ooh. All right, fellas, we are up and running and now it's time to have some fun with this thing. So one of the very first things that I'm really curious about is this display on the back. Like, what in the world is this thing? Factory default, it's not lit up. We have nothing on here. So let me just see, is there a setting for this? Let's... Uh, all right, let's head on into the settings here. And, oh look, we have display and then rear display. Use rear display is actually toggled on, but we're not seeing anything on it. Um, maybe it's because we don't have a rear display theme set. Let's just pick one. Let's just hit apply here on this one. Applied successfully, flip it over. Oh, that is freaking cool. So what do we get out of this? Do we get a touch screen? I I really don't know. And does it blank? Now that don't blank whenever the front screen blanks. All right, let me see. I'm going to try the clock. So we'll pick the clock. We'll hit apply. And when I hit apply, that is on there immediately. What exactly causes that dis display to light up? Does it a, oh, a double tap. Okay. So if you tap the phone or something bumps it, it's going to light up. Is that right? Single tap? Nope. Tap, tap? Nope. Um, oh, the display's touch sensitive, right? So that's really cool. We're actually showing the battery level here and we can get other, th other things to show here as well. What are our other options here? We have in call, so we can actually have it advertised to everybody around you who you're on the phone with. That's kind of nice. Um, let's see, we've got some music options. So after updating, it did give us some more themes for the clock. It gave us actually several more themes. Uh, let's see, no additional themes added for in-call or, or music. We just have some additional ones for the clock. And then there's also this setting here. It says, flip to wake. When the switch is turned on, flip the phone to wake up the screen when the secondary screen is facing up. This function consumes a lot of power. If the battery power is lower than 30%, flip to wake up the secondary screen will automatically turn off. So they're saying, with that on, you flip the phone over, it automatically turns on that back screen, but it's still gonna time out after 30 seconds or whatever, you know, whatever the setting here is. We can change the turn off period to 10 seconds or 15 seconds or 30 seconds. So even if it's set to flip to wake, then you know that screen is still gonna go to sleep after after however many seconds. So that's pretty well it for the rear display. I do wonder just how customizable it is, like whether or not third-party apps can interface with it and just exactly what all can be displayed on that. So moving on from the rear display, I'm gonna pop a SIM card into this thing and use it as an actual phone, but one thing that really concerns me is that if we have a look at this product listing on Amazon and we scroll down here, it's got all the specs and all that and, you know, and whatnot and everything about the phone. It has this line here. Doji S98 does not work with AT&T or Cricket or CDMA carriers such as Verizon Sprint and Boost Mobile. Hold on, don't let me lose your attention just yet. The issue here I believe is voice over LTE and the phasing out of, of, of 3G service. Some cell phone carriers have been going to a whitelist only deal to where they're only allowing phones that are on their whitelist to be able to connect. And I went through this with the Blackview phone. The phone worked flawlessly for about 30 minutes whenever I got a text message telling me it was not compatible. I proceeded to call my carrier on that phone and I was speaking to them with that phone as they were explaining to me that it was not compatible. Long story short, it is not illegal to change your IMEI number in the United States. Now, it may very well violate the terms of service of your carrier, but if you would like to make your carrier think that, say, this is an LG phone or something, well, 
perhaps there may be a way to switch the IMEI number. Now, interestingly enough, if I check the same exact product here on Amazon, just a slightly different listing, the information here about which carriers it does not work with seems to be gone. And it now says, if the S98's network can't work, please let us know to help you solve it. So I do suspect that this is a phone where if it's not gonna work with your carrier, even though it is completely, completely compatible. I fully suspect that if you were to contact these people, they're going to say, oh yeah, just you know, press a few buttons here and change this here. And then uh, all of a sudden your carrier thinks it is an approved phone and it will work flawlessly. That, that, that's my assumptions anyways. I, I don't wanna say that for sure. So keep all this in mind. Now the pry tool that they sent here, the purpose of this thing is actually to be able to get the SIM tray out of it. Now in removing the SIM tray, you can see here that this thing is like, wow, it is like extra long. It'll hold one SIM card, two SIM cards. And then also uh, one thing that people ask about a lot, it's not too much of a big deal to me anymore, but it will take a micro SD card. That is pretty stinking sweet. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of choose it random here. I'm just gonna kind of hope that the spot that I have it in is the first slot. All right, now I'm gonna try very carefully here to not drop that SIM card like down inside the phone without its holder. Now, I have really been liking this about the rugged smartphone that I'm using now. It also has a big fat O-ring around the SIM tray like it is. And I have also added just a tiny bit of the grease that I use on my scuba gear to, to help seal it up. So we'll just slip that right in there right like that. And I actually had to push that pretty stinking hard to get it in there. So with Google Fi, for some reason, it does make you install the Google Fi app before it will activate. As a reminder, this phone hasn't been fully tested on Fi, but most features should work as intended. This thing actually says voice over LTE. So that's really something connected to Google Fi. It says the mobile network is uh, T-Mobile. Well then, I just spent the last 45 minutes or so trying to get this thing to work with Google Fi. But what I have found out here is that it will get 4G LTE on the status bar. I am showing full signal and it even shows voice over LTE is active. But the Google Fi app keeps coming up saying it is not able to activate. So I decided to open up a chat with Google and Google came back and said, Sorry, this phone is not supported. So then I went ahead and sent this email off to Doji, hoping they would have some magical solution, but they did not. They said that the Google Fi app had to be downloaded by itself, but there is no self-contained download. So maybe some creativity? I'm gonna give up with trying to get it to work with Google Fi, move on with this review, and then I will come back to the carrier stuff later and see what I may be able to do. Now, I think most people that are reviewing rugged smartphones are maybe out to do like durability tests and see how many smashes they'll take before they break. This is not something that I'm just going to like intentionally try to damage. So if you're after a durability test, have a look on YouTube, search it up. There are plenty of people running these things over with cars and doing crazy stuff to them. Whew. It's hot in here. Let's get this thing out of the shop anyway. Let's get out of here. We have irritable teenager for YouTube. I'm gonna kick it, boy. Ah. This thing does pretty good video. So checking out the rear video camera, I've got this thing set on 1080p. So now I'm gonna do the same exact thing with the quality set on 2K, and I will show you all what that looks like. So these next two clips, these are both in 1080p. And then to conclude the daytime rear camera testing, I'm gonna close with a series of still shots here. So the video quality and color reproduction seems pretty good. I'm not really sure why we are stuck with 30 frames per second in 2022. That seems kind of nuts. So then how about that night vision camera? delay is terrible and when you just breathe it takes it a lot of focus like it's like it has a really sensitive lens or something. I wonder if there's a setting or for that. Or maybe that can't focus or that you have to learn how to focus. I don't know. I mean I don't know nothing about it. See that right there? What? A stamp. Yeah. It stamps your pictures. 
insane. Surely that's not watermarking those photos. So before I send everybody into complete panic mode, let me just say that the brand water toggle is actually right here. And that is what toggles the watermark on and off with the photos. But you'll want to be kind of careful with that, see, because we actually took a good handful of pictures with this thing before we realized that they were actually all being watermarked. But lo and behold, it is just a really easy setting. Drop it down and toggle it off. So testing out the night vision in complete total darkness, it seems okay-ish. However, the frame rate actually seems like it is suffering a bit. That could be because I'm not really giving it a whole lot to focus on here. We've basically got some shells and moving water. And also this type of night vision is pretty short range because it is dependent on the infrared light to be shining. You know, it is actually light. All right, so that pretty well takes care of the cameras. Now, also this phone has wireless charging, which on a phone that claims any sort of water resistance, I feel like that's a pretty important thing. So with wireless charging, what that means is that you can leave this plug in all the time. There's basically no need to ever yank the, you know, the cap off the bottom of the phone. That is unless you need like a high speed method of transferring data, which I do pretty often, but we're talking like weekly or every couple of weeks, something like that. So with wireless charging, you pretty well never have to take this cap off the bottom. Now, one thing that I really need to say about any phone that is claiming to be waterproof I have yet to bump into one that is actually legitimately fully waterproof. In fact, the rating, the, the IP rating, that IP68, the 8 in that rating is what is telling us that it is waterproof, only it doesn't actually tell us that it's waterproof at all. It says that it'll survive X amount of water for X amount of minutes. So you could literally build this stuff out of like compacted cardboard and as long as it would survive for X amount of minutes, you could still get that eight rating on the end of your IP68. So I guess what I'm getting to is that these phones, they are massively liquid resistant. Compared to a Samsung phone, these things, I know the Black Few does, I'm not sure about the Doji phone yet, but I have found there to be an O-ring that actually goes around the perimeter of this. And then the phone is sealed with you know, it's actually cranked down with, with screws. So there actually seems to be a superiority in, in water resistance compared to like a, a Samsung phone, like a Galaxy. You see here is a Galaxy S10 Plus and it's not, they're not hard to open at all, but once they are open, you can see that it is nothing but double back sticky that holds these things together. There's, I mean, it it, it is literally only double back sticky that holds it together. And once that's been open, what do you think the odds are of being able to completely seal this up and have it be IP68 again? So whenever I'm out on the boat with this thing or whenever I get caught out in the rain and it's getting splashed and stuff, I really don't worry a whole lot about it getting damaged. In fact, the last time I got it splashed with salt water really good, I came home and just sort of like rinsed it with fresh water. Now, I'm not gonna be just like a, a total dummy and just put this thing underwater all the time because I know it will eventually destroy it. But as far as having an active lifestyle and being around water, like it's totally cool. So yeah, we're stuck at 30 frames a second on the camera for, for some reason, hopefully somebody will fix that pretty soon. So I think that pretty well sums up all of the main features. Now, as far as carrier service goes, I was not successful in getting the, this to work with Google Fi. And then also, I went ahead and put a Cricut SIM card in this thing in which it worked perfectly fine. I was able to make a phone call on it. And then all of a sudden I get a text message to this phone saying, hey, your device is not compatible. You need something that works with HD voice. Well, it clearly does have HD voice. So with the issue seemingly not being caused by hardware, that means all one would need to do to get this to work on Cricut would just be to make them think it was a different phone and then it works fine. So I'm not gonna go into any details as far as like how to do that. I'm gonna leave that up to you guys. You know, research this with your carrier, 
Check with Doji, see if it's gonna work for you before you spend the money. If you are interested in purchasing the Doji S98, I'm going to leave a link or links in the description below to tell you how to do that. I'm gonna be hanging onto this phone for a bit longer because there's some other things that I need to do with it. So thank you Doji for sending me this phone for review and also thank you all for watching. I really appreciate you following along and uh, I'll see you soon. Have a good day.